Hello, everyone. That's a uh, service mesh with STU series. We have here a GitHub page that you can follow from Raul Ray, our speaker, and you have all the demos that you can clone this repo. You also have the Catacoda um, course. You can just click. We are going through all the scenarios. You can also get the Docker image used by the demos on the Docker Hub, Fast Track STO. We're back here for the for the last episode talking about service mesh series. And the subject now is observability. What's that, Raul? I know that we're using that for a long time on the cloud native space, but Raul is going to show us what observability means on the service mesh space. Welcome, Fernando. Hi, hi, George. Hi, Raul. Last video, I'm excited. But first, please, if you did not subscribe to our channel, do it right now because it supports us and it makes us recording more videos for you. So now, Raul, go for it and show what is observability. This is like a new terminology for who is not from the cloud native space. What's this? Uh, thank you, George and Fernando. So now we are on the very last uh, exercise uh, of the STO series, and we are going to focus on observability in this video. So if you are following along, we are on exercise number eight. Uh, you can uh, play with it on your own uh, using the Catacoda link uh, that is uh, available in the description section of the video. I will be running the demos on AKS. So let's jump over to discuss uh, what observability is, and then we'll take a look at uh, all the tools that uh, Istio comes bundled with when you install Istio, and we'll look at all the dashboards that uh, Istio provides. So observability is a broad term. It's made up of uh, three different aspects. So metrics, which is, uh, uh, with, is a generic term to Denote, uh, uh, denote categories, for example, error rates, request count, request duration, things like that. So the numbers for all these uh, kind of attributes get combined in a, a single heading called metrics. Another pillar of observability is tracing. So uh, more recently, you would hear uh, Jagger and Zipkin and uh, other tools that are adopting uh, an open tracing standard, which is uh, trying to make tracing uh, standard across different tools. So it's just a pattern that uh, different tools need to follow in order uh, to be compliant with it. And uh, uh, once different tools start logging uh, uh, their data in using the open tracing format, it can be made visible using uh, various kinds of da open source dashboards. So uh, Yager comes uh, package, both Yager and Zipkin are packaged uh, with Istio, and you can choose to install either one. By default, Yager is uh, installed. If you don't specify any tool, then Yager would be installed along with Istio. Uh, the third pillar of observability are logs. Uh, more specifically logs from Envoy, because you uh, could lo uh, put your logs in the traces and they would surface on Yager or Zipkin dashboard. But then you also want to look at logs that are generated by Envoy in case you want to uh, debug the Envoy proxy itself and uh, see what's going on in there. So let's talk about uh, individual tools that come packaged uh, with Istio. The first tool is Prometheus. So Prometheus uh, captures uh, some service level metrics, for example, errors and uh, traffic uh, details. So there are uh, several uh, metrics that it aggregates, and we'll uh, look at those when we discuss, uh, when we look at the Prometheus dashboard later in the demo. Uh, so not only uh, does it scrape uh, metrics from services. It also scrapes metrics from proxies and Istio D as well, which is the control plane of Istio. So in a sense, you whenever you uh, query for logs from Prometheus, 
you not only are able to see the logs that are generated by your application, but also uh, from the proxy, from the control plane. So you get an overall view of uh, how your entire cluster and more so your service mesh is behaving by looking at the logs that now, looking at the metrics that are scraped by Prometheus. Uh, some of the common uh, metrics that uh, people generally look for in Prometheus are, uh, uh, are represented on the screen right now. These are HTTP metrics that are uh, captured by Prometheus by default. So some of these will uh, actually query for when we look at the Prometheus dashboard later on. Uh, some of the most important ones are uh, uh, the Istio request duration seconds, which will show you how much time a request is taking to be uh, responded by uh, your service. It includes the time that is taken by the Envoy proxy to handle the request and uh, also that by your workload. So you can not only uh, monitor the latency that is introduced in the request by your workload, but also by Envoy. So. As I said that uh, Jaeger is uh, one of the open tracing tools that are installed by default. Uh, Jaeger was built by Uber and it's an open source uh, tool. And without making any changes to your application code, you can uh, add a Jaeger to your uh, application. It simply sits in the sidecar and uh, monitors the logs that are generated uh, by your application and by, uh, and by the sidecar. Uh, completely managed by Envoy proxy because it doesn't require any changes in the application port. So uh, Grafana is one of the dashboards that come packaged with uh, uh, Istio. So it's simply a visualization tool. So from, uh, as we discussed that Prometheus is a log scraping tool, so it will scrape metrics, but then you need a proper dashboard to see those uh, numbers for those uh, for all the metrics that were scraped by Prometheus. And Grafana is one of the very popular visualization tools for it. Uh, many customers build their own dashboards on Grafana, which you can pin on the home screen, and uh, then you don't have to keep uh, going through the charts and uh, diagrams that you draw. You can simply look at the uh, an individual dashboard and look at uh, what's happening inside your cluster. Uh, another quite powerful dashboard that comes packaged with STO is Kihali. Again, it uh, scrape, uh, it uses the data metric scraped by Prometheus and uh, surfaces that data in a visual format. Uh, some of the advantages it has over Prometheus is that not only it shows you uh, all the numbers that it scrapes from uh, Prometheus, but uh, it also scrapes, uh, it can also show you metrics from the services that are not even part of the cluster. So if services are uh, living on the cluster but not onboarded on the mesh, then uh, even for those services, you can see how they interact with the services uh, within the mesh on Kiali. Uh, this feature is not available on in Grafana. And uh, here you can also uh, visualize your, uh, uh, you can see all the specs that you apply in order to onboard services on the mesh. And if you see issues, you can even modify them and uh, apply them again from the dashboard. So it is very powerful in that regard. So now what we will see is uh, the dashboard that uh, come packaged with uh, Istio and all of these uh, uh, things that we spoke about in the presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to my terminal. And uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, first apply the specification. So what I did now, I will quickly take you through it is I deployed the whole application that we built, the entire book club application is a uh, demo application that we built, all of its services uh, on the mesh. So you can see that I deployed the book club UI application. I deployed the books API 
I deploy the legacy uh, API. The books API talks to the legacy API via an endpoint, and I also deploy the movies API. Uh, remember, we spoke about the customized file. So just to recap, customization is a special kind of file in, uh, uh, with respect to Kubernetes specifications. So if you have a file named customization.yaml, and it, it is of the type customization, then all the specs that you specify in the resources would get applied when you uh, use the command, uh, uh, use this particular command, kubectl customize, and provided the name of the folder. And you can then apply this file to your cluster by piping it to the um, apply command of kubectl. So now that our service is up and running, to validate it, uh, let's jump to the dashboard. We'll go to the ingress part. You can see there is an IP address uh, mapped to our in ingress gateway. You can click on this, and it will take you to the service. Here you can see that uh, all of the underlying APIs are working, so you can move around. And uh, we need to explore this service a little bit, click on the various links, because what it is doing underneath is uh, all the tools that come packaged with Istio is uh, allowing them to capture some logs. So what we are going to do now is uh, look at the logs that we have generated, although they are not many, because we just now started uh, using it. But what will do now is uh, apply the tracing spec. So let's first go through the tracing spec. So what we are doing is uh, uh, we are specifying a gateway endpoint. Again, uh, not recommended, but it is there just for the demo purposes. So uh, using a gateway, we are going to expose. Uh, right now we are talking about uh, Yager dashboard. So we are going to expose the Yager dashboard to the internet. Obviously, you shouldn't do this for production applications, but uh, it's here for that, the demo. So we are going to expose another port on our gateway, uh, which is this one, 15443. And uh, we have a virtual service uh, that is going to route the traffic to, that is bound to the gateway. And uh, it is going to go to the destination uh, denoted by the destination rule. And uh, what this destination rule is going to do is, it is simply going to uh, route the traffic to the tracing service. So tracing is a, a special service that uh, gets deployed when you deploy Istio. I think it should be visible here as well. So uh, there is an Istio tracing service. This is the service to which the destination rule that we just saw uh, would route the request to. So let's apply this specification now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this from here and apply it. So it uh, created these services. It's not going to create any deployments because the Yaga service is already deployed to our cluster. So as we saw that uh, we mapped the service to port 15.443 on this endpoint, uh, what I'm going to do is just copy this IP address at 15.443. We are now on uh, the Yaga dashboard. Let's now look at uh, the book club, let's say, application. If you look at it, uh, this one is quite interesting to see here. Uh, we can see that the book club application is making a request to the books API. Let me revisit the diagram so that it's easier to understand. Here, user interface is talking to the books API and it is talking to the legacy service, and that's the exact same behavior uh, uh, thing that we see here, that books reaching the legacy API, how much time each uh, endpoint is taking, and you can even expand it and see all the data that uh, Yager aggregated from the request. So it is possible to add uh, custom logs here as well. 
uh, right now we haven't configured any uh, the logging to reach Jaeger, so that's why they are not showing up here, but you can enrich the default logs with uh, your custom messages. So this is quite powerful as in without any instrumentation, you are able to see this level of detail. So another interesting thing I would like to show you is this uh, the directed acyclic graphs. So here you can see that uh, uh, where is our API? So our UI is making has made six calls to the book service, and uh, we also have busy box services running. Remember, we haven't removed those, so uh, they're also running there. Uh, and uh, it's also talking to the legacy API and the movies API. Bro, I think that's like um, I have a development background, and I mean that's a that's a dream for the developer, but could be a nightmare because now the testers and sees that mean they can see everything. There's there is no way to hide anything. Like, <laughs> but it's just, it's just amazing, you know. Compared with a few years ago, you know, when I started, is kind of having all these information is just amazing. Yes, uh, so Jaeger is uh, quite an interesting tool and I use it quite often. Uh, but yeah, this this is what you can uh, do with uh, Istio because the Jaeger comes packaged with default. Uh, so let's move on to the next spec uh, and uh, inspect the next tool that uh, we have in RKT. So first I will delete spec. Now another interesting thing that I would like to talk about why I have to delete uh, specs is because I want to reuse 15.4.4.3 for uh, demonstrating other dashboards. And Kubernetes by default your gateway only has a limited set of ports that you can use and because I have several dashboards to show so I'm reusing these ports. Um, bro, just a quick question. How how much overhead you you adding for these when you enable tracing? You know, how many milliseconds you think that you adding to your response? So how that works? Is that any overhead or is just do, is the, is done in parallel? Uh, so these uh, tools they don't work in sequence. So all of the logs they are uh, they would be captured by Prometheus or uh, uh, in this case, I think by uh, Jaeger. So, and all that is happening here is we are using the visualization dashboard for the numbers that have already been captured asynchronously by uh, Envoy. So it doesn't add a lot of overhead because uh, all of this uh, data gets captured asynchronously. So we'll as yeah. well see this in action when we deploy the Kiali dashboard. It doesn't immediately start reflecting the data. It has a little bit of lag, but uh, that is there to improve the performance so that when active processing is going on, then uh, it shouldn't be scraping logs at that time. Yeah, that's important to say. Some people think that's adding, you know, some load, maybe a little bit load, but it's all done asynchronous and it's not going to stop your call to your service. It's going to yes. be done in parallel and asynchronous and yeah, it's great. Uh, so now what we are going to do is uh, surface the Prometheus dashboard. So if you go to the Prometheus uh, YAML file, uh, we are going to use the same gateway uh, port number 15443, uh, a virtual service that is bound to the same gateway and a destination rule that is going to forward the request to the Prometheus service, uh, which is another service that is deployed when you install STO. So in order to apply the Prometheus spec, we'll just apply this file. And uh, once this file is up and running, should be able to go to this URL to surface the Prometheus dashboard. Uh, so you would notice that uh, the Prometheus dashboard is not very interesting uh, and I spoke about a few important uh, metrics that Prometheus captures. Here, those metrics are available. Uh, so let's say we want to look at the total number of requests captured by Prometheus. 
So you can click on this, click on execute, and you get a graph view of all the requests that were made uh, at whatever time and all the data that it captured for uh, all of those requests. Uh, there is also a console view where you can look at the raw metrics that it captured. And it has its own uh, query language called PromQL. Uh, you can use that in order to write queries over here. Uh, there isn't uh, much to look into this. Uh, many people use other visualization tools like Grafana uh, or Kiali to visualize all this data that uh, Prometheus captures. So we'll quickly jump over to uh, Grafana and uh, look at the logs that Prometheus yeah. has captured. Raul, I think I think as a homework, they probably can integrate now Azure monitoring. You can integrate with the Prometheus. They can scrap anything on your cluster that's a Prometheus, Prometheus you know, configuration. Then you you probably don't even need to have you know the Prometheus server. Yeah. Not sure if we have this easy, but maybe we can do another video and talk about how to do that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so all I'm demonstrating right now is uh, what comes out of the box. You can obviously extend it with uh, AKS native features. Uh, so what I did now is uh, remove Prometheus uh, uh, virtual service from uh, my system because I want to deploy Grafana now. So for Grafana, I have a similar spec. Let me first apply it and then show it to you. So the Grafana spec, nothing much fancy here, same. You have gateway at 15443. Uh, it reaches the Grafana service and by default, Istio deploys a service named Grafana and we are just forwarding the request over there. So now if we go back to, I don't know why I, but, uh, 15443, will take us to the Grafana dashboard. Uh, here you can create your own dashboard and do many things. Uh, but here you can enter a PromQL query as well. Let's look at the same thing that we saw the last time. Uh, let me click the show button. Yeah. So here you can see the same graphs, but you can draw a much better graphs and can create dashboards using uh, Grafana uh, that you can't with uh, Prometheus. Although these are the exact same metrics that uh, are available from Prometheus. It's just Prometheus data shown in a different way. Uh, yep, it validates <laughs> that as well. So you can see that the data source is Prometheus is what is uh, noted over here. And this is the only data source available. Uh, so let me now switch over and uh, show you my favorite dashboard of all, which is Kiali. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to delete the Grafana spec. And uh, switch over and show you Kiali. Uh, just to be clear, you're deleting because you're using the same the same port number. Yeah, uh, yeah, but you, but you could run it all three. Yeah, different service because by default gateways have a limited set of port numbers available. So yep. I'm reusing everything. Uh, so here again on four four three, the gateway is available. Virtual service bound to the gateway destination rule forwarding everything to Kiali service. Uh, which means that if I now go to, uh, it's much easier to copy. It will take me to the Kiali dashboard. So here, uh, it also asks for username and password. I think I have. Uh, the browser remembers it, but the default username and password is admin admin. <laughs> uh, you can obviously change it by adding a, a configuration spec, uh, which you can read about in the uh, Istio documentation. Uh, 
So some of the very interesting things that are available in this dashboard is uh, that it shows you the complete uh, dependency graph. Uh, so you can choose uh, not only uh, the traffic that is flowing within your service, but you can also add Istio system and the default namespace to it, and it will show you uh, there isn't much traffic flowing in those, but it can show you all the traffic from those namespaces as well. So uh, here, what it is displaying is uh, uh, the, the the services that are running in our system and uh, how many calls are getting made. And you can even configure how fast this graph should refresh. And uh, while this graph is live, you can uh, make some requests here. And should uh, show those application, those graphs turning green. They change color when uh, active traffic is getting fast between the services. Uh, uh, here you can see that. I don't know whether you can see the color. But all of these paths have become green in color. And uh, since I didn't click on the legacy API endpoint, that's why it's still gray in color. Uh, you have to see the colors. Can you see the colors now? The, the arrows, yes. Yeah. It's so nice. That's so neat in the you know, So yeah. powerful for, for developer testers, is that means. And then when it's kind of. Yeah. Okay, and the most powerful bit in Kiali are the configurations. So if you make any errors in configurations, then it would show you. Right now they are ticked with green boxes, but uh, they would be, you would have red boxes, uh, circles with cross in them if your configurations are not right. And if you want to look at the configurations that you applied, you can look, check them here. You can even modify their values and uh, apply them again on the dashboard. Not something that you should do, but uh, something that you could do. <laughs> uh, you can even delete configurations yeah. from there. And in production, you don't have to be, if you don't want to you know, capture all these things all the time, you can just enable when you need it, you know, but if yeah. you want to debug something, but normally if you want to look for the past, then you have to leave running forever, but Sometimes yeah. just going to deploy a new version, just going to enable that mm -hmm. to monitor the new version for a while. Then you know, that's a good way to do it, and it's amazing. Yeah, and it shows you a lot of data. And I have just scratched the surface, but as you can see, you can even check the logs here uh, that were captured by uh, Jagger earlier. You can see the same spans exist here, and you can look at the logs here, the same logs that uh, are visible in uh, Grafana. Oh, sorry, Yaga. Uh, the same bit, same information is available here as well. So, so this is a, quite a powerful dashboard that you can use uh, when you have SQ installed. But that brings me to the end of my discussion. That's all I have to show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have been on that journey, you know, of that's the observability is the last one of the series. And I think that's bringing now opportunity, Raul, for us to do some bonus sessions about the like API gateway, how we do API gateway integration, how we do like native Azure or cloud service integration with the service mesh like a front door application gateway you know how discuss the uh, active directory how we integrate azure monitoring with this of the availability and there's a lot of things that we can discuss and i'm looking yeah. forward to that yeah me too oh thanks Raul. Uh, this kiali is very powerful i'm impressed here looking what this dashboard can do for us yes Yes. Thank you. Thank you for Thank watching. You, Thank you. If you want to follow Raul Ray, uh, our speaker, just go for his blog, thecloudblog.net. There's a lot of blogs here, a lot of content. You can see links for his uh, books. One of the books 
is the STU book just released a few months ago. It's a very nice one. I really like the Kubernetes one as well. I've had a look before. And also, Raul is one of our bloggers and mentors. There's a few blogs here on azureta.com. Please follow our uh, blog. And Raul is here as a, a one of our main mentors. Thank you for following and helping. The, the community is all about helping others to publish content. Thank you.